become Barack Obama's dream, and that is a suburb of Indonesia where individuality, independence, and freedom is gone like a dodo bird. Well, I'll, I'll expand on that. You write for WorldNetDaily.com, and Farah has said on the show that he was so sick of Republicans selling out that he thought he'd teach him a lesson in 2008, and he wasn't for McCain. I wasn't either. And then Obama came in, and you just, we can't relate with somebody that actually wants to bankrupt and destroy the country and hates freedom and hates Christians. And, and then you come to grips with the fact that's really happening. And then you realize, I mean, they're demonizing Donald Trump because, okay, only hundreds of Muslims celebrated 9-11. So what? Hillary said she was in combat in Serbia, and it's all made up, Brian Williams style. The point is, is that it doesn't matter what they say about Trump or Cruz or any of these people, we certainly can't support Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. I mean, good God. Talk about yeah, nails I, I in this, this country's way. coffin. I've changed some of my hardcore conservative friends uh, from abandoning ship by giving them this analogy. Your daughter is dying. She's on the island. You have to get the medicine to her across the water or she will die. Your best boat is gone. You have the enemy with the only boat. Do you or do you not get on that less than desirable boat to get your daughter's life-saving medicine to her? America is dying. And whether the GOP candidate is perfect or not, it's the only boat going to the island that will get medicine to a dying country. And we got to quit with this demand for perfection. And then let me tell you, if it was John McCain, which was a complete joke, he was, a, he was a complete idiot. And as much as I respect Mitt Romney, he acted like a complete idiot. He, ha he came to a gunfight. He with rolled a over. He came to a gunfight with a crayon. It was embarrassing. He deserved to lose, except so many Republicans, so many independents said they wouldn't vote because he wasn't perfect. And look what you got. You got the devil in your living room because Barack Obama slid in while you were waiting for Michael the Archangel. Thanks for nothing. You said it, and, and Ted Nugent, you actually brought tears to my eyes, and, I, and that rarely happens to me when you talk about America's dying. America is dying. Those aren't words. We, This country is dying. It's dying. And then you look at other countries, there's not many to go to. It's so sad, and it's being replaced by demonic, hateful scum. I mean, it's crazy. Alex, let me, let me give you another perspective that I'm, I'm really humbled and honored and privileged to have. And that is on my Facebook and my communication. I get these texts and emails through my office all the time from people from everywhere around the world, from Japan and Australia and England and Ireland and Belgium and France and Spain, because the rock and rollers love the attitude. They love Stranglehold. Well, your music's, you your, your music's as good as it gets, too. So let they, they know that only a guy that kills his own food with sharp sticks and defies punk-ass peer pressure can write a song like Stranglehold, and deep down in their sheep-like European butts, they know that there's a warrior somewhere, but they're not allowed to be warriors. So they love my music, and you know what they express to me thousands of times every day on Facebook? I get comments from Belgium and all across the European landscape. Ted, we look to America as the last place for individuality, for being the best that you can be, for freedom, for the American dream. It only existed with a Constitution and a Bill of Rights. And Ted, you're throwing it away. They know I fight, but overall, we are throwing it away away in the name of more sick days and more wealth. Switzerland and, and America are the last countries to fall, and Switzerland's falling to tyranny as well. We are falling. We are. And what comes if we fully fall? What will they do to us, Ted Nugent? Well, um, they're, they're going to have to trample the weak and hurdle to get the dead to get to me. Um, I, I, I just got a new 300 blackout. And, you know, we could talk about firepower. We talk about... All Ted, I know you got to go, seven. but we got to go break for 60 seconds. Do five more minutes with us. Talk about the latest you're up to. Final comments with Ted Nugent back in 70 seconds after this break. TedNugent.com. I'm Alex Jones from Infowars.com. We had Donald Trump on Unleashed. Donald Trump is a listener, folks. That's the inside baseball. And uh, that, that interview is coming back up as well. Lord Monkton coming up from Paris. After Ted Nugent finishes up for five Thank minutes. You for listening. What did Thomas Jefferson famously say? A true liberal, but a right-wing racist, according to the left.
What did he say? A nation of sheep will be ruled by wolves. Well, you talk about a big, mean, tough sheepdog with eyes of electricity. It's Ted Nugent. We got five minutes left with him. I wanted him to be able to come back and comment on the state of the world and everything that's happening. I'll quote a tale of two cities, Ted. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. A lot of good stuff's happening, a lot of bad stuff's happening, but uh, finishing up with your latest tour, what you're up to, what's happening in the world, where everything's going. I would love to see you run for president, but I think it's a little late this cycle. Who do you think a Ted Cruz or a Donald Trump should have for vice president? And if they ask you to run for vice president or maybe the head of the Interior Department, that'd be perfect for you. Would you be part of the government if folks... I wanted to get you involved because I know a lot of Americans that want to see you involved in the Department of Interior so they're not harassing hunters and homesteaders and others. Well, thank you for that endorsement. I appreciate that. And as you probably witnessed on my Facebook with, you know, tens of millions, I, we, we hover between 10 and 34 million Facebookers. And as we get way up there in the millions, it's in, in the 90 percentile that are asking me to run for president. That's that's an indicator that things are really, really bad because the author of Wango Tango probably shouldn't be considered for the presidency. But here's what Let me I stop thought. you. I was driving back from Dallas two weeks ago. Big old billboard at somebody's ranch saying Ted Nugent for president. Saw one in Arkansas six months ago, buddy. It's everywhere. And the, and the reason is, is because they read my books, they read my articles, they read my stories, they go to my Facebook, they see what I stand for, they listen to me on Ted Nugent's Spirit of the Wild television, and they vote us number one show every year on Outdoor Channel. Not because we kill giant bucks, it's because I make sense. I am in the asset column of America. I would eliminate welfare because all it is is a carrot to dopes who want free stuff and enjoy... The system's scared of American men. They're afraid of John Wayne. You look out there for a modern John Wayne, it's Ted Nugent. Well, and again, thank you for that, but I'm a simple guy. I live within my means. I save for... But you're not a slave. Day. And I would, I, would, I would kill my slave driver. I wanted to be a Jew in Nuremberg in 1938 while the brown shirts were herding people onto trains. I'd have figured out a way to get that brown shirt Nazi punk ass Luger away from him. I'd have shoved it up his ass and I touched off a clip and I would have got the magazine and I would have got all the other Jews to raise hell. Now, I'm not knocking people who fell for it, but I'm telling you, don't fall for it. Learn from don't history. Get on the train. I'm in with you, brother. I'm going all the way. I'm not backing down. We're trying to fix stuff peacefully. If the globalists down the road, they want to fight, they're going to get one. Yeah, if they want to fight, I welcome to Texas. Even my uh, my good friend, the, the Detroit police captain, the chief of police in Detroit, finally admitted that the reason Detroit is safer right now is because there are more citizens with concealed weapons permits, and people don't like to... Well, that's what's positive. The up. head of Interpol, Ted, as you know, two years ago said, arm everybody like Texas, so there is some good news. Sure, and, and you know, I saw Gutfeld uh, one day on Fox on the, the Five. He quoted that guy where self-defense is the clear and present answer to danger, and he, he actually said, who said that? The, uh, the chief uh, uh, t terrorist specialist from the U.N. or Ted Nugent? Again, common sense. If you're unarmed and helpless, you're unarmed and helpless. What an embarrassing, irresponsible condition and choice that well, is. Well, the answer so to tyranny is straightforward. Men like Ted Nugent and people like Ted Cruz, people like Donald Trump. It's just amazing. And the fight's on, and it's beautiful because we're going to win in the end. And this tyranny will only make us stronger in the end. I know we're going to win, Ted Nugent. Everybody takes action. Everybody shouldn't feel like a responsibility to get involved. It's an honor to be involved in the fight for liberty. TedNugent.com. Thank you for your time. I know you fight six, seven hours a day for freedom on top of all your other work. So thank you, Ted Nugent, for your tireless commitment and your energy. There's only one other guy who has more energy than I do. It's Ted Nugent. Ted, thank you so much. Godspeed, Alex. Everybody have a great Christmas season, a great hunting season. Remember, stand up for what you believe in. Raise hell or move to Cuba. Ted Nugent's got what it takes.